I have some good news for you. I'm going to teach you how to solve Sudoku in just two sentences. And with that, it's solving time. So start by getting some easy solves. You might notice with these threes, there's only one place for a three in block nine. So you can solve that right there. And now you can't have a three in these cells. And with this three, you can't have a three here. So in this column, column seven, the only place for a three is right there. And then if you notice that this three covers this cell, and these threes cover these two cells, and this three covers this one, the only place for a three now in row two is right there. Greetings, friend. I'm going to boil down all the Sudoku tips, tricks, strategies, and techniques I share into just two sentences for you so you can solve Sudoku easier than you ever have before. And now the question of the day. What would be your two sentence Sudoku formula? Please, please, please share and help me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. I'd love to hear from you and what you think you could do in boiling down Sudoku into two sentences. And now I'll reveal the two sentence Sudoku formula that you can use to solve Sudoku easier than ever before. So the first sentence, find out what expert solvers do, comma, and do the same things. It's that simple. And the second sentence, even more important than the first. And you study this one even more. The second sentence, find out what poor solvers do and don't do that. Okay, think about these two things. So it has to beg the question, well, what do expert solvers do? If you have no idea how to solve like an expert, how does that help? Well, after solving thousands of Sudokus myself and studying dozens of the world's best solvers, I can tell you, you want to implement a scanning and marking system that's effective. And so I suggest you look for digit restrictions from one to nine. So if you look at all the where the ones can be, you might notice with this one cut across the row, there's only two places for a one in block five. And so mark that, and anytime you only have two possibilities for a cannon in that three by three block. And since these ones are in the same row, one can't be anywhere else in that row. You try to put a one here, here, you block out ones in block five. No good. So now it restricts the ones of these two cells in block six. So mark that. So this is the start of your scanning system. And working one to nine helps because you can remember easily that you've done the ones and now you can move on to the twos and work your way up to the nines. If you look at the twos, you might notice there's no places for only two marks for two or any solves at this time. You don't want to mark where there's three places like right there. That will clutter up the grid. It's not as efficient that's what poor solvers do. They add too many marks. You want to be efficient. So instead, move on to the threes. And what you might see with these two threes and this three, two places for a three in block one, and then with these threes and this three, two places in block six. So you do that quick scan. Nothing else to mark with the threes. Move on to the fours. Like I said, you don't want to do the overmarking. You only want to show where the critical restrictions are. If you look at the fours, these two fours and this four, you can solve for a four now and block two. And then take these fours and this four, two places for a four in block eight. And then if you follow this four across row eight, you see there's a four already in column three you have another pointing pair of fours in block seven. So now fours can't be in these cells. To go with this four and this four, you have two places for a four in block four. And then finish up and look in block six and notice with those three fours, you can mark fours right there. Okay, nothing else with the fours. How about the fives? A lot of fives. So with these two fives, only place for a five in block three is right there. And then with these two fives and this five, only place for a five in block nine is right there. And then with these fives, and just scan down and across, move over to the next block as you do your scanning, and you'll have a nice, smooth system. 
with all these fives, you can solve for a five right there. And then you might notice with these two fives and this five, you can solve your last five right here in block four. And then you notice that by solving that five, I displaced that four mark. So now you can quickly solve this cell for a four, but you're not done. The other thing the experts do is they look at impact on row, column, and block. So you solve for five there, displace that four. Now, if you scan across, you remember, you just made a mark for a four right there. That can't be a four anymore. So you can displace that four and add another solve cell of a four. And move on to the sixes, because we're done with the fives. You might see with this six and this six, you can solve for a six in block nine. And then that restricts the sixes to these two cells in block six. These two sixes and this six, you can look up here in block one, only two places right there. And then with this six, covering these two cells, two places for six in block five. And what's important about these two sentences, is you have to practice it. You have to live this, solve Sudoku every day, five minutes, 10 minutes, every day. You can't just read the sentences and think you're gonna be a better solver or just watch me, I want you to solve for yourself. So let's move on to the sevens. What should draw your attention at this point you only have one seven here, but you notice you have seven digits filled out in block three. A one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Only two cells remaining can contain a seven or a nine. So you want to mark that. It's called a naked pair. And I actually cover the naked pairs, the pointing pairs, and the other strategies you'll see in this video in my free Sudoku solving guide. If you want to learn some more of these tips and strategies, click on the pinned comment and download it now. You might think you might be done with the sevens, right? Because you did that, no other places for, only two places for a seven in the grid. However, the expert solvers love to look at that restriction. And so how you might have seen how here you have seven digits fell out in block three. If you come down here to block seven, you also have quite a bit of restriction, right? You have a three, five, six, eight, and nine. You have at least five cells filled out in a block or a row or call, and that's why I call that a heavy house. And begs the question, is there more restriction here? You're just missing a one, two, four, and a seven. Maybe you see the one, two, four in this column. If you do, then you notice this cell right here can only be a seven. It's a naked single seven, and you want to find that. It will reduce your solve time so much if you can find naked singles while you're doing your scanning. Because now what that does is it allows you to have this seven and this seven, two pointing pair of sevens in block nine. And then it restricts the sevens of these two cells right here in block eight. But you're not done. You're creating quite a bit of restriction. You might notice there's only three cells remaining in row eight. What could that be? It could be a one, two, or seven. Okay, and since the sevens are restricted here, you can remove that seven from this cell. But then you notice what digits were in row eight here? You see there's a three, four, five, six, eight, and nine. If you stay right here in block eight and do a quick scan up, what you might see is you have the same given digits in column five, a three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Well, that's crazy. Because what that means now is what can be the missing cells? Just a one, two, or seven. So you have a naked triple of a one, two, seven right here right? Only three cells remaining. But now you also have a naked triple one, two, seven in column five. And because of this one, you can remove the one right there. And so now you know that you restrict the ones of these two cells in column five. That's a claiming pair is what that's called. So ones can't be anywhere else in this block because they have to be somewhere in column five. But what's more important here is by looking at these two naked triples, you form a third naked triple here in block eight, right? And by naked triple, it means that those three cells can only contain the digits one, two, and a seven. Since this is a pointing pair of sevens, that can't be a seven. And this is a claiming pair of ones, that can't be a one. 
But since 1, 2, 7 have to fill these three squares, these three cells cannot contain a 1, 2, or 7 anymore. You actually have to find it. This is a critical solve of this puzzle. Because that means it just leaves a 4, 8, and a 9 as the remaining three cells. You could also see this as a hidden triple. 4 can't be there because of the 4 in the column. And because of this 9, a 9 can't be there. We haven't even gotten to the 9s, and now you've found this huge solve of 1, 2, 7, naked triple, 4, 8, 9, hidden triple. Awesome. So you want to see what's the impact, row, column, block of what you just found. What's it do for our eights, right? You haven't even looked at the eights yet. With these two eights in the row four and column one, that has to be an eight right there. So I just gotta get out of color mode, solve that four and eight, then follow this up to block one. With those eights, this has to be an eight. And then with these eights, this has to be an eight. And now you can see, because of the eight in the column, you can actually solve that for a nine now. and leaves you with just a four, eight, naked pair. And I remove the fours knowing that this has to be a naked pair. Awesome, all right. Continue to look for the impact here. You might notice now with the eights, you only have two places for an eight in column seven. That's a two eight naked pair. So mark that naked pair, show that restriction. And now with this eight and these eights, the eights are restricted to these two cells. So you get back to that system, you don't want to miss another easy solve. Looked at every place an eight can be. At this point in the puzzle, look at the nines now. Because you solved that nine with these nines, you can solve for a nine and block two. Then look across. Immediately you should see that you can solve this cell now for a seven and that cell for a nine. And continue to look for impact. With this seven, you can displace that seven, solve this cell now for a seven. And then look up this column. You have a 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, you need a 1, and a 6. Notice how the 1's only marked in this cell right here? That means you've already excluded from that cell. You can solve this for a 1 right away. Displacing that 6. You can remove the 1 from right there. And instead of being stuck, actually go back up to where you make these solves and see row, column, and block impact. This was your breakthrough up here. So go back up. This is what the expert solvers do. Learn from that. You can solve that for a 9 now. And then with these two 9s, you can solve this cell for a 9. And then follow this 9, you can solve this cell for a 9, displacing that 8. Means you can solve this now for a 2. These are just a 1 and an 8 here in block 9. And when you get like 1, 2, no more than 3 restrictions, it's worth solvent worth putting that in there then you might notice right here what you have left is a three and a two well with the two right there that's your two displacing that three now look at the impact with these threes this has to be a three here in block four all you have left is a six and a seven in this block well with the seven just pull on over that's your seven that's going to be your six now look at impact here. With this 6, you can displace that 6, solve this cell for a 6, and you have a nice full house. 8 of 9 cells filled out, guaranteed you can solve this cell for a 2. And then what does that leave you with? A 1 and a 7? Can you do better than that? Mark the 1, 7 right there, and yes, you can. Because with this 2, if you look down the column, that now has to be your 7. So there's your 1, there's going to be your 7. So I made the mark, but you can clean it up quickly, do so. Means that can't be a 7 right there, it's a 1, 2. And so you might see with these 7s, this now has to be your 7. Look across the row, that's got to be a 2 now. And with these 2s, this has to be your 2. Don't see a 1 in block 2, so solve that for a 1. Look at the impact, this 2 means that's a 1, that's a 2, that's a 1. It's my right angle trick. And then look at the impact here, right? You can clean up the bottom because that's an 8 and that's a 1. That's a 4. That's going to be an 8. And now with this 4, you can displace the 4. Solve it down there and solve this cell now for a 2. Okay, follow your marks. You might notice that you have a 6 in the column. So you can displace that 6, solve this cell now for a 6. And you're very close to the end with the 3. Displace the 3. Hunt down knock out the marks, that's what the experts do, nice uncluttered grid, and you can solve the rest of the puzzle very quickly.
Because with these two ones, this has to be a one, and your last cell is a seven. Now, apply the two sentence Sudoku formula to solve this next puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.